By the spring of 1918, the First World War had raged for nearly four years. On the decisive Western Front, the armies of Germany, Great Britain, and France had battered each other for years with all the weapons of war that 20th century industry could equip them with. Machine guns, quick-firing artillery and rifles, gas, aircraft, and flamethrowers. Despite years of practical experience, no one could break the deadlock. This was the context in which the untested soldiers of the U.S. Army's 1st Infantry Division would conduct their first large-scale combat operation. In May of 1918, the commander of the American Expeditionary Force, General John J. Pershing, assigned Major General Robert Bullard, the commander of the 1st Infantry Division, the mission to attack to seize the town of Cantigny, a salient in the German front lines. Bullard assigned the mission to the 28th Infantry Regiment and elements of the 16th, while also leveraging additional support units. Perhaps most significantly, he would integrate a field artillery force consisting of the entire American 1st Field Artillery Brigade as well as 37 additional batteries of French artillery, all told over 386 cannon. Additionally, Big Red One soldiers would integrate Allied specialists, a battalion of 12 French Schneider tanks and a French section of 10 flamethrowers. To form these units into a cohesive force, Bullard ordered intensive rehearsals for several days. Behind friendly lines, the Big Red One soldiers made terrain models and conducted a leader rehearsal over ground similar to that at Cantigny. Next, they conducted a full dress rehearsal, before finally conducting two days of rehearsals with the French tanks and flamethrowers. Bullard wanted to be sure his troops were prepared to successfully employ combined arms maneuver in the conditions of modern combat. On May 28, 1918, the operation was initiated. Bullard decided to employ a short, intense bombardment in the hopes of retaining some element of surprise. At 0600 that day, those 386 cannons opened a ferocious one-hour bombardment after which only the lighter 75mm cannons would continue to fire in support of the infantry. Minutes later, 4,000 1st Infantry Division soldiers went over the top and advanced against enemy positions in and around the smoking ruin of the town of Cantigny. Despite some sharp initial firefights, the Big Red One soldiers quickly seized the town and established a perimeter on its far side. What followed next was the true test, the expected enemy counterattack. For two days, multiple German infantry battalions, with the support of 100 of their own cannon, launched ferocious counterattacks against the 1st Infantry Division positions. Despite heavy fighting and casualties, the American soldiers held their ground and eventually the German commander called off the attack, admitting defeat. Of the 4,000 Big Red One soldiers who fought at the Battle of Cantigny, 300 were killed and 1,300 wounded in just three days of combat. The Germans are estimated as having suffered even more heavily. Despite having limited experience in this kind of war and never having attacked under these conditions, the soldiers of the Big Red One proved that the United States Army was fully capable of fighting and winning on the modern battlefield. <laughs>